guys, how's it going? This is part two of our brand new shrubs for 2021 video. If you haven't seen part one, we will link it down below. There are 30 shrubs that I wanted to talk about total. That's a lot of plants and they're all exciting and I kind of wanted to take my time a little bit. Um, so that's why we decided to do it in two different parts. So in the first video, I covered 17 of them. Uh, the numbering scheme I used made no sense because there are a couple that come in a series. Like there's three new clematis coming out. They're all part of the same series, a Sparky series. I counted that as one number instead of three. So anyway, you kind of have to ignore my my numbering scheme, but we're gonna do the remaining 13 shrubs today. So I just wanna jump into the first one, which is a Tortuga juniper. And I have to tell you that I'm always really excited when I see a new juniper come down the pike because junipers are one of the very few plants that are native to my area. I know when I put a juniper in the ground, like it is going to live. It will thrive and it will like outlive everything else in my garden. And this Tortuga stays fairly small. So it just grows about two feet tall and three to four feet wide, zone two through seven. It can take bad soil. It can take the soil underneath a black walnut tree. Um, it's adaptable to all different kinds of things. I mean, air pollution, it likes it dry and hot. I mean, it's just one of these plants that you can put out there. It's just tough as nails. And it has a very kind of ferny, uh, soft appearance about it. Very beautiful emerald green. And I really feel like this would be a beautiful one to have in a container as well because it wants to stay naturally smaller, maybe even as somewhat of a spiller plant over the side of one side of the container. I think it would be a really pretty uh, evergreen accent. Number two is a center stage red crepe myrtle, which is actually a plant I can't plant in our growing zone. We are a zone six, this is a zone seven through nine, so really good for those of you guys in more mild climates, maybe southern, warmer southern climates. Uh, it has a very interesting look to it. It has very bright red blooms that contrast the very dark, almost black leaves. It reminds me a little bit of the Holy Grail hibiscus that has that same kind of look, the dark colored leaves and the big bright red blooms. Since I can't grow crepe myrtles, I'm not sure what size range they are available in, but this variety grows about six to 12 feet tall and eight feet wide, which as trees go, that's a very nice, small statured kind of space saving, tree size. So this variety supposedly grows very vigorously. It blooms summer through fall, and it's supposed to be very disease resistant to the things that normally plague crepe myrtles. So it should maintain a really nice leaf um, appearance throughout the whole season. Number three is called Austin Pretty Limits Oleander, which is one other one I can't grow in our area because this one is a zone eight through 11. It was selected in Austin, Texas. And when I was reading up about this plant and looking at pictures, I read that it blooms all year round and it says that several different times. And I thought, this is the plant that everybody wants. <laughs> like I remember when I worked down at the garden center, I'd have people come in and just say, I just want something that's in color all year round, which is incredibly hard in a zone five, six. Um, but if I lived in a zone eight through 11, I'd be looking into a plant like this. It grows about four to six feet tall and four feet wide. So a decent sized shrub, it produces buds on both old and new wood, which means it's constantly churning out buds for new blooms, which are really eye-catching. They're very bright pink. I think that they contrast the kind of medium green leaf color really well. And the um, habit looks very pleasing. Like it's not open and you know, there's no gaps. It's just very kind of dense and full. Number four is an Illuminati Arch Mock Orange. And I'm very excited about this variety. I actually think I have it out in the cold frame ready to plant this spring because it differs the older varieties in that the leaves look completely different. Like in the old varieties, they look kind of dull. Um, a lot of the season, they don't look very pretty. Like they are beautiful when they bloom. And then they just sit there looking a little bit scraggly through the rest of the season. But with the Illuminati Arch, they actually have very dark green, kind of thicker leaves that look more viburnum-esque than mock orange-esque. <laughs> of course, in early summer, they come out with huge, big bunches of white blooms that have that classic, wonderful mock orange scent. There's nothing quite like it out in the garden. And this variety stays a little bit smaller. So four by four, easier to place in the garden, zone four through seven. It does bloom on old wood, which means you really wanna side it out in your garden in an area where it can grow to its full size, which four by four is not massive. So it's pretty easy to find a location just to put it and let it do its thing. Number five is a fine line improved. 
buckthorn. So there is the fine line, and now we have a fine line improved, which the improvements are that this one, it grows five to seven feet tall, two to three feet wide. So really amazing for very small areas in your garden where you need some vertical interest, but you can't afford the space for them. Um, they have better branching from the bottom. So the older ones might be a little bit thinner toward the bottom, and then they kind of thicken up as you go up the plant. This one is nicely branched and thick from the bottom all the way up. Um, so a very pillar appearance. And you might be thinking like buckthorns. I think that they're actually restricted in some areas of the country. Um, these are different in that they set very, very few fruit. And of the fruit that they actually do scent, I think it's like 2% will actually germinate. I think that was the, the stat that I read at some point. I'll put it on the screen if I'm wrong. Um, but it's not one that you have to worry about ever taking over. And they look really amazing in the landscape and in containers. They're a really fun alternative centerpiece. The fall color on these almost cannot be rivaled. It's one of the most neon yellow colors. It, they're just beautiful. And they're also a zone two through seven, so incredibly winter hardy. Number six is Perfecto Mundo Double Purple Reblooming Azalea. I'm excited for this one. It is a zone six through nine, so one that I could technically try in our area. I do believe that they prefer a slightly lower pH than we have, like probably a significantly lower pH than we have. So it's one I'd have to work on our soil chemistry a little bit, but it's one that I'm willing to try because the flowers are so pretty. They're a very deep kind of purplish pink double, uh, very striking and they bloom all through the season. So spring through fall, they're constantly setting new uh, buds and blooming as opposed to, you know, just doing it for weeks like a lot of your other azaleas. So they'll give you months worth of color. It grows about three feet tall by three feet wide and is supposedly highly resistant to diseases and insects, especially the lace bug, which is apparently very problematic to azaleas in some areas. I don't really have a whole lot of other things to say about this one other than the fact that I hope I can get my hands on one or two to try out in our garden. Number seven is the Ringo All-Star Rose, which this is a very interesting one to look at and one I'm excited about because I do like the color variations that this one provides. It grows about two to three feet tall and three feet wide, uh, and it's got blooms that start out kind of this vibrant melon, apricot, orange color with some pink, and then they age to a lavender. And typically on roses like this, we have blooms in all different stages of growth. So you have the buds that are vibrant, then you have the fully opened uh, fresh blooms, and then you have the more faded out blooms. So you'll have all of those different colors going on all at the same time. They're very low maintenance rose in that you don't have to deadhead them. They will continue to bloom summer through fall without any deadheading, and they're highly disease resistant. So the uh, worry about spraying for black spot and other fungal issues is usually not even something you have to think about. Number eight is the Baby Kim Lilac, which is an improvement of the Miss Kim Lilac, which has been around for a long time. And I'm excited about this because I've always favored the Miss Kim. My parents had a couple in their garden, like all the years of me growing up, and I always just remember them being so beautiful. But the Baby Kim has some improvements. It grows about half the size of the Miss Kim for one, so very easy to put out in the flower bed anywhere, two to three feet tall, three feet wide. The flowers start off in bud a very deep purple, and then they fade to a lavender, and then they fade um, to just like a lighter lavender than that <laughs> instead of a white. Um, and Miss Kim, typically when they fade, they were fading to like more of a white kind of dirty color. So I like the color improvement there. They also have really beautiful, rich green leaves that have kind of a glossy appearance. They're a zone three through eight, and they're rarely bothered by things like disease and deer. However, even though I don't deal with deer issues in my garden, I have heard that if deer are hungry, they will try just about anything. <laughs> Numbers nine and 10 are types of taxis or U, which is spelled Y-E-W. So we've got the Stonehenge Dark Druid and Stonehenge Skinny. So number nine, the Stonehenge Dark Druid is a really uh, versatile shrub. It grows about three to four feet tall and three feet wide. A very dense, low mounded kind of uh, growth habit dark green glossy leaves and a really excellent substitute for boxwood. If boxwood's a problem in your area, if you deal with boxwood blight, this might be a good substitu substitution for you. It's a zone five through seven and it does maintain really nice winter color and they can handle all kinds of different light. So give it shade through full sun and these will be happy. So number 10, the Stonehenge Skinny has a completely different growth habit. It grows six to eight feet tall and only 12 to 18 inches wide. So a very intense pillar shape. If you want something really cool for a container or for a very narrow spot in your garden, or if you've got an area where you really want to block a view of something, but you don't have much space, this is a really good option. And this one maintains really good winter color as well. Um, really dark green, glossy leaves. In the spring, the new growth is bright green. So it's got kind of a different variation there, which is nice. No pruning, no shearing is necessary for this one. 
They aren't super great in areas with high deer pressure though, so keep that in mind. So numbers 11, 12, and 13 on my list are all of viburnums, all of which don't grow in my zone six. They need to be in a little bit more of a warm climate, which totally bums me out because I read the descriptions and look at the pictures of all of these and I want them all. <laughs> so number 11, Sweet Talker Viburnum is for a zone seven through eight. It is one of the first shrubs to bloom in late winter, early spring, and it just gets covered in these deep uh, pink kind of tube shaped blooms with that heavenly viburnum scent. And if you know, if you've smelled one, you know what I'm talking about. There's really nothing like it in the early spring to smell that perfume in the air. And that's one of the main reasons why I want it. But the leaves on it are also kind of uh, leathery. They're thick, semi evergreen, uh, kind of a, a deep green with a burgundy overlay. And then that burgundy intensifies in the autumn. So you get a nice autumn show as well. It grows about eight to 10 feet tall and three to five feet wide. So a substantial size shrub, or you can prune it up to be kind of a small tree and they are resistant to deer and rabbits. And numbers 12 and 13 are viburnums called yin and yang. And I wanted to put those kind of together because you do need to plant them together in order to get uh, the bright blue berries that they'll produce. Both are a zone seven through nine, but the yin variety is one that gets a little bit bigger. So two to four feet tall uh, and then about four feet wide. And they have white clusters of blooms in the spring, blueberries summer through fall. They get really nice fall color. So they do provide a lot of interest throughout the whole year. And then you have the yang variety, which stays a little bit smaller. It tops out at two feet tall, four feet wide. So it looks very much more wide than it does tall. I always like that in the garden. I love that kind of shape in a shrub. Um, but both of these stay fairly small and you really do want to put these in a spot where you can let them grow because they do bloom on old wood and you don't want to have to mess with uh, pruning timing and all of that. It's one of those that you could just kind of plant it out there, make sure it has consistent water and then you can just let them do their thing. So that is it for my list of new shrubs. That's all 30 of them in two different installments, part one and part two. We will be following this up with new annuals and new perennials to be watching for as well some really fun developments in those categories too. Now, as far as uh, when you can expect to see these things, when you have brand new shrubs coming out onto the market, um, sometimes you don't see them. You'll see them start to trickle in to your garden center slowly um, as growers are like kind of building up production numbers and things like that. Um, and it's also worth talking to somebody your at your local garden center because sometimes you'll find garden centers where um, it's very easy just to order the tried and true varieties and they don't really like explore some of the new ones. So if you see anything in any of these videos that piques your interest, let them know, talk to them about it. People did it down at the garden center all the time when I was working down there, they still do. And my mom looks through all the orders and makes sure that she's ordering things that people want. And so it's worth letting them know like, Hey, I see this new variety. If you see it, let me know. Definitely like something to have down at the garden center this year. And if that's not an option, you can always order online and you will find, especially in the first year or two, the production numbers of quart size is much higher than maybe larger size. And they are fairly small when you get them. So don't be shocked by that, but plants grow. They typically grow pretty quickly. Um, so we've done unboxings too, showing the different sizes. Maybe we can link that down below as well. Like what do you expect when you order a quart versus a one gallon versus a three gallon? what kind of size difference you can expect. And I did think I heard at one point that they might not be offering the three gallon size online anymore, which I can't blame them because they're big, big cans full of soil and water. They're hard to ship. I'm not sure about that though, so don't quote me, but I know in the unboxing video that I did of plant sizes, we did have a three gallon in that one. And I'm just not sure you can order those anymore. So definitely one to look for at your garden center. So that's it guys. I hope this video was fun to watch and fun to learn about new plants. Um, again, we will be doing another couple of videos showing you the new perennials and annuals. So be watching for that. Thank you so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.